First of all, thank you, uh, Miguel. Thank you for the wonderful introduction, and uh, thanks to everyone in the audience for welcoming me to give a, a, sh a short virtual presentation on this very important topic. So, I, I want I want to talk about something that is growing in importance, uh, and and for very good reason, uh, which is the sort of impact of ESG initiatives on, on digital marketing. And perhaps something that not everyone's thinking about, which is how AI can actually be utilized to, to help us in this endeavor. So first, just sort of quick background on me. Uh, my name is Alex Colmer. I'm the, the founder and CEO of Vidmob. Uh, I started the business uh, actually 10 years ago this year. So um, yeah, it's been a long time and I've been working with, with Miguel and team for, for most of, of that journey. Uh, I'm, I'm an engineer myself. So some of the stories that I'm going to tell uh, through this presentation are actually things that I, you know, sort of lived through uh, my, myself. So I guess first of all, you know, what is Vidmob? Uh, Vidmob is the creative data company, uh, and the reason we think this is important is uh, I think everyone in this audience is aware that AI is going to become more and more important in our lives uh, as marketers uh, and, and just as you know, people sort of living and operating in the world. But what's interesting is while there's so much enthusiasm about generative AI to create content uh, and AI for media decisioning, I think one of the things that a lot of people are overlooking is the fact that those tools, while they're incredibly powerful, are going to be available to everyone. So in their own right, they're not going to be competitive advantages for any of our businesses, uh, just the same way that you know Google Maps or Apple Maps, while an incredible technology, is not an advantage. So the question then is, as marketers, like how do we find differentiation? How do we separate from our competitors? Uh, and, and our belief is that sort of creative data, the, the, the science of learning what to make with these tools is going to be that, that differentiation. But that creative data can also be used for other things. And that's sort of what the, the purpose of this talk is. So we are all, I, I'm sure, spending lots of time thinking about how we're going to use AI with, with advertising campaigns. Uh, and you know, certainly uh, at the forefront of that is you know, generative AI, this ability that we are all now very soon going to be able to make infinite content uh, you know, with really just the, the push of a button. Uh, and with that, though, is going, to be, is going to come all sorts of questions and challenges. Uh, you know, if you can make anything, how do you know what to make? Uh, and how, and if we have, you know, tens, even hundreds of thousands of pieces of content out there in the world, we're going to need a new set of tools to be able to monitor that uh, and measure the impact of our uh, that content, not just in terms of how it's driving, you know, brand performance, but other forms of impact as well. And so, I think that's sort of a good segue here to discuss the, the challenge of gender and diversity uh, in, in technology, right? So uh, this is a, a really interesting story here that looks at sort of the, the impact of, of advertising. So just sort of quickly jumping back, if we look at a chart of you know, female graduates uh, across a variety of fields through the 60s, 70s, and 80s, we see a really consistent upward trend here. So whether it's you know, medical school, law school, physical sciences, or computer science, the percentage of female graduates through the 60s, 70s, and 80s was on a straight line up. And that was wonderful. But something changed in the mid 80s. While medical school, law school, and physical sciences continued on that upward path, computer science graduates plateaued and started to fall. And so the question that I think we all should be asking, and this is something that resonates home for me as an engineer, is what happened in the early and mid 80s that led to this dramatic change in, in progress? And the answer lies, I think, in how we started to represent people in the utilization of technology. It lies in, in advertising. So what happened at that time was the personal computer was launched. And you had companies like Apple 
you know, IBM, Microsoft starting to run advertisements. And in all of those advertisements, we can see a really consistent, pa consistent pattern. It was always men, always boys playing with, with these, with these computers. They were seen as boys toys. And one after another, after another of the ads uh, features a, a male character using, uh, using this new and powerful tools. And as you see in the on the advertisement on the right, with there uh, there actually is a woman uh, in this Apple ad. So, from a diversity perspective, it checks that box. There's a woman there, but from an inclu inclusivity perspective, um, it, the question is what is what is the female character doing? She's in the background cooking. She's in the background washing dishes. And so all of this this accumulated mass of advertising ended up having an enormous impact and I believe ended up playing a significant part in, in changing the trajectory of, of female usage uh, of female graduates of computer science. So as marketers, we have to recognize that this, that this is the type of power that we have. Our decisions, what we choose to run, the type of content that we, we choose to run actually has downstream impact on, on society. And so like this is this is the reality that we're dealing with. And then the question then is when we're out there running tens, hundreds of thousands of individual pieces of content, how do we monitor that and make sure that we're actually doing things that are going to drive uh, you know, the right results? And those right results are not just for appropriate you know, moral uh, or because we think it's good. It's also good for business, right? Uh, just looking at some of the, the research that on the topic, we see that you know sixty eight percent of consumers feel the need for greater representation in advertising. And perhaps more importantly, from a bottom line perspective, we see that forty percent of consumers are out there saying that they will stop using and buying purchasing you know, products from brands if they're not promoting uh, inclusivity and diversity. So this is not just about doing the right thing for the world. This is about driving profits for your business. Uh, and, and the more that we can use tools to show up in inclusive and diverse ways, we're actually going to lead to better business results uh, from that. So then the question is, how do we get there, right? Uh, and here I think is, is an area where technology, uh, AI in particular, offers us a path to do to sort of progress in a way that is probably not what's being talked about, right? Like all the talk is about the power of generative AI and you know the amazing things that we can do with Sora or Midjourney or Dali, uh, but AI has all sorts of other cap capabilities that that can be felt in very real ways as well. So, what I want to talk about is a tool that we rolled out in beta form at the end of last year, which enables marketers to monitor all of their content across every channel that they're showing up, across you know, Meta, across Google, across TikTok, across Snapchat, across Amazon, across everything, and be able to monitor that content to ensure, is it meeting our organization-wide diversity goals? Um, is it representing the audience that we're going to be talking to, right? If we, if we know that our audience is going to be 50% under 35 and 50% over 35, well, how do we know that our content is actually showing up in a way that's going to feel fair and balanced and representative of, of that audience? Uh, and importantly, how do we identify when there's, an, when there's a part of our audience that is underrepresented uh, and make sure then that we have the, the means to go about and change that and prepare? So we, we rolled out uh, the, the first brand to, uh, to adopt this technology was Mercado Livre, uh, who, who, who began using this at the end of last year. Um, and it's incredibly important when you're looking at, you know, sort of, you know, any region in the world, but across Latin where you have, you know, very diverse audiences in different countries, right? Like what diversity means in Peru or Argentina or Brazil or Mexico is going to be different market by market. And so you need tools to be able to monitor all of your content in each of those regions to ensure that you may be doing very well in one, but not the other. Uh, and so AI offers us a path to be able to monitor content everywhere in the world that we're showing up 
and ensure that as a brand, as a company, as marketers, we're doing our part to be representative and through that driving the business results that we're all on the hooks to, to drive. But it's not just about diversity and inclusivity. Uh, these tools also enable us to uh, have a really material impact on our sustainability efforts as well. So uh, we actually are rolling out um, in the next few weeks a plugin that's going to sit inside of the Adobe environment. So any agency creator, any independent creator, any in-house creative team will be able to in the place where they're actually working, you know, within Adobe After Effects, within Illustrator, within Premiere, they'll be able to score their content for its adherence to uh, the platform best practices, for its ad adherence to brand guidelines, for its adherence to diversity metrics, uh, for its adherence to all the things that are critical. And importantly, what this will do is it'll it'll enable people to not even render an asset unless and until it satisfies all of that criteria. So in doing that, it'll eliminate enormous amounts of creative waste. Now, what we've sort of heard in the market is that most brands use somewhere around 10% of the total content that, that, that they create. That means that 90% of content is wasted. And if you're going through and making things, rendering them, uh, and then you know sharing them through you know email or we transfer or uh, sending it over to your media agency, to, and then it gets rejected by the platform and sent back, the amount of waste there is incredible. Uh, in fact, what we've seen is that the average uh, advertising campaign emits about 5.4 tons of carbon. That's an incredible contribution, and. As a body, uh, we as marketers all have a part in, in doing better. So uh, our hope is that by adopting this tool and by pushing this out to our agency partners, to our, our clients, to our, to our brand partners, and to our creative partners, we're going to be able to help people dramatically reduce the amount of creative waste uh, and the amount of uh, sort of carbon uh, that we're all sort of pushing into the environment as a result of that. So this is another, uh, I think, really exciting, but perhaps less talked about application of AI uh, in the marketing process. So we can certainly all be excited about generative AI, and we should, because it's incredible, and it's going to make all of our lives easier. But uh, our hope is that through these um, uh, diversity and inclusivity tools, giving us the, the means to make smarter decisions and understand just how uh, inclusive we're being, just how representative we're, we're being in our content. Uh, and through uh, tools like this plugin, we'll be able to have dramatic impact on uh, sustainability as well. Uh, and in doing so, I think as marketers, we all can essentially be part of the solution, right? Which is, I think, something that we all want to do. At the end of the day, you know, how do you go home and spend time with your husband or your wife and know that yeah, in, in your daily efforts, you um, were sort of helping to make the world a better place, not contributing to the problem. So um, uh, thank you for the time.